Now, why have the miracles declined? I don't think that's anything due to our own failure of faith. There are miracles, first of all. We do see miraculous things happening all the time, not quite in the spectacular way, I grant, that we read in the New Testament. I think God made his point. How much more of a miracle do we need to become believers? You know, there are texts which says that we ought to believe because of what Jesus says. That should be sufficient. We shouldn't need to have spec have spectacular miracles. He did grant them, and there's a text in Hebrews that speaks as though the gifts accompanied the first preaching of the gospel, as to say by the apostles, but doesn't necessarily accompany the current preaching of the gospel. And the signs and wonders then are the accrediting miracles of apostles. So you cannot have that level of apostolic signs and wonders because there are no apostles like the 12 today. We don't have Agabuses who predict the future accurately. We've had many, many mistaken apostles. We've had people setting dates for the second coming, as the Jehovah's Witnesses did from 1914. We've had all sorts of mistaken prophecies. They're not genuine. Who today is predicting the future accurately without fail, like Agabus? I don't think we have such a thing. If they are around, they would be, I think, much better known. I don't think they exist, quite honestly. The claims far outreach the reality of what so-called today's apostles are able to achieve. Those signs and wonders that belong to apostles must have seen that degree. Now, I'm not going to say what degree is possible, but the degree of signs and wonders pertains to the apostles. That's what Paul clearly said in the book of Acts. It's quite clear, too. So that much, the degree of cessation, I don't know. I'm not going to say miracles can't happen, but I will say that some of the claims are quite false. On the language issue, for instance, it must be a real language to be the real thing. You can't just open your mouth and babble and fail to translate and claim that that's a gift of languages, because clearly in the book of Acts, the, book of the, the language of tongues was real language. And I concentrate always on 1 Corinthians 14, 13, which says, if you're going to claim to have the language gift, and it's not for everybody, because Paul said quite dogmatically, does everybody have the gift of languages? No way, not at all, any more than everybody has the gift of healing. But he did say that if you are one that has that claim in 1 Corinthians 14, 13, then you are to self-interpret. You are to interpret yourself so that everybody may hear what God is saying to you. So I would say that Paul is not in favor of a permanently untranslated language. You can do it in the closet up to a certain point, but that command is utterly clear in 14.13 of 1 Corinthians. You are to pray to interpret what God is saying to you. I find with many people claiming to have that gift, they simply get stuck there. You say, well, why aren't you doing that? They've never, in fact, investigated whether what they're saying is a language. They've never prayed or succeeded in translating it or having somebody with a companion gift dictation. Nobody's ever verified. Paul is no friend of unintelligibility, one of the big dictionaries says. That's very good. So that's the best answer I can give to that, but I don't, I don't think it's true to say there aren't miracles. There are not spectacular miracles to the extent that we see in the New Testament. I can live with that. I can accept that.